Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Taito Ecology, where we're once again in our Himalayan biome with our brand new friends, the Snow Leopard. Now, we have a lot of notifications up here in the corner, which I'm a little bit worried about, and it looks like, if we zoom out here, that our Snow Leopards may have actually completely destroyed everything that we placed down in the zone for them, which is a little bit worrying. <laughs> they ate a ton of food over um, the last month, if that's the case. I think it is. Look at all of those. All of these things died off. Our muntjacks died. I was kind of expecting that because in the last episode, the last time we were here anyway, the snow leopards took those down very, very fast. All of our pikas had trouble. Our marmots. Oh my goodness. These snow leopards are crazy hunters. They are really, really good at hunting. <laughs> at least we know that now. And they have huge appetites too. So I'm a little bit worried now that maybe our red pandas might be having trouble because if the snow leopards ate all of the food in this area, then surely they had to go further down to uh, find more to eat because their territory is very, very big. So it kind of scrapes all of these animals over here. So that's a little bit worrying because I think our red pandas were supposed to uh, have babies <laughs> over the month. So, oh my gosh, I hope they didn't eat them all, did they? Let's see. Um... Okay, well, there's only one adult, but there's four juveniles, guys. So there are actually little baby red pandas here. <laughs> it, um, let's see, is this the baby red panda? I think this is a very, very small little guy. It's only one week old, so there he is. This is the little baby red panda, and I believe his uh, brothers and sisters are in the background here. Here's another one currently running for uh, probably some breakfast because it looks like he just woke up. <laughs> Where are you going, you crazy guy? Don't go over there because the snow leopard is going to eat you up. In fact, we probably want to hurry up and uh, put some more food down for the snow leopards so they don't eat our baby pandas because that would be very sad. <laughs> it looks like they already ate the uh, other two adults that we had in the area. So let's place some pikas right on top of this hill here. So hopefully that uh, snow leopard that was sleeping in the snow is going to be able to grab it for breakfast. Um, Oh dear, I don't see the snow leopard anymore. Where did you go, Mr. Leopard? Where did you go? Oh, there you are. It's actually really hard to see these guys because they blend in so well with the snow, which makes sense because that's kind of what they're supposed to do. They are snow leopards and they need to blend in very well so they can uh, hunt their prey properly. Otherwise, they would not have been able to wipe out all of our creatures over here. That would not have been possible because they would have been able to uh, see them coming. So we have six pikas in this territory to hopefully give them a little bit of food to munch on. Actually, are both of them still alive? Okay, they are because I've only seen one. So again, I'm a little bit nervous here. <laughs> so let's add um, two groups of pikas actually. We'll add another one over here. And then let's see, is there anything else? Um, maybe the chevrotains because uh, those are always interesting to have in a biome. They are very, very interesting creatures as I'm sure you're all aware. I like them very much. Um, I think we, well, the munchaks, it's its interesting because I thought they were mostly um, herbivores, but they're actually omnivores, so they can eat little tiny creatures as well. So I'm kind of uh, leery to put them next to all of our tiny, tiny herbivores because I have a feeling that they would munch on our pikas as well, which is not going to help our snow leopard situation very much, now is it? Um, maybe the musk deer would be better because that says it is a herbivore. And I'm, oh my gosh. Is this our pomegranate tree? I didn't even notice. Oh gosh, <laughs> wait a second. Get off of the munchak. Okay, I think this is our pomegranate. So there's uh, those fruit. It looks like there's little flowers on it right now, actually. Yeah, it's flowering, and then pretty soon those will turn into fruit. Oh my goodness, that is adorable. I love those little blossoms. It kind of reminds me of uh, that beautiful rhododendron bush, which is my very favorite thing in this biome. Um, but we want to unlock that musk deer, I think, because this should probably help us out pretty well. Um, it's a larger creature. It's a medium anyway, so it should sustain our uh, snow leopards a little bit more than a tiny little pika would. But I do want to check their bio decks before I place them in here because that's always a good thing to do. It's always good to make sure that uh, you know <laughs> what you're placing in before you just plop them right into the biome because I've made that mistake before, especially with the muntjac. So let's see, their diet. Despite their sharp, formidable looking teeth, musk deer are strictly herbivores. They'll eat many kinds of grasses, mosses, and uh, lichens <laughs> and only use their canine teeth to fight other musk deer during the mating season. And for predators, leopards, wolves, and even some foxes prey on musk deer. 
Though a musketeer can leap up to six meters, they tire easily and often fall prey to the more agile carnivores. And because of their long, sharp teeth, the musk deer don't grow antlers. Their canine teeth grow continuously and are easily broken off but can reach lengths of 10 centimeters. Oh my goodness, <laughs> very, very large teeth. So um, I think we're pretty good. We'll just add these musk deer in here. Oh gosh, where did they go? There they are. We'll add them to the back of the biome over here by um, where our pikas used to be. Oh my goodness, we used to have uh, pikas here. We had our pomegranate trees and we had our blue poppies, which have all disappeared. <laughs> the pomegranate trees are still there, of course, but um, the poppies and the pikas are not. So I wonder where the poppies went. I wonder if uh, they ate them all up. That's interesting. Um, we do want to place more grass here then because we don't want these guys to go hungry either since they are uh, strictly herbivores, we have learned. They won't be eating any of our uh, other creatures, which is good. Even though they have those big teeth on them, <laughs> they don't use them to uh, tear into any sort of meat. So that's good. Oh my gosh, that is so cool though. They look like a little vampire deer. <laughs> that is adorable. Um, let's see, is there anything else we should add here? Probably, do we have any ants in the area? Okay, we have one up there um, because we know that we're going to need ants to take care of uh, all of the carcasses that I'm sure are going to be popping up. It seems like they did a pretty good job over the last month because I haven't seen any carcasses lying around here despite the utter chaos <laughs> that the snow leopard brought along with it because it definitely destroyed everything in this biome. Um, we'll place down some blue poppies back over here though in our little uh, our pomegranate poppy patch. <laughs> no more pikas, unfortunately, but uh, I'm sure the musk deer will enjoy them instead. So we'll place a whole bunch of pi pikas, no, poppies over there, poppies over there. And uh, we'll also speed up the time a little bit so that we can gain back energy a little bit faster too. And we probably should also check the other side of the biome. Um, because we want to make sure that all of the other creatures are also surviving. <laughs> I know these little foxes over here can be very, very ravenous creatures. They like to eat as much as they possibly can. So how are they doing? There's still two foxes left in here. And um, it seems like they have enough prey, right? Uh, most of these animals have the little caution signs over their heads, which probably means that they're on a low population at the moment. So that's a little bit worrying because the foxes definitely need to eat too. But, uh, oh, there's our title coins, of course. <laughs> That's always good to see as well because we're unlocking so many things. There's still so much more to unlock that uh, we are definitely going to need that. But it seems like we might want to add something in here to help sustain our red foxes because I have a feeling that they're not going to last much longer if they keep eating at this rate. I see them down there too, those little red blobs in the snow. They're very easy to spot here as opposed to um, our snow leopards, which is probably why... Um, nothing has been completely obliterated over here because the foxes probably have a little bit of a harder time hunting in the snow than um, our snow leopards do. So do we have, uh, yeah, ants over here as well. Just want to make sure because uh, we need some type of scavenger to clean up all of those carcasses that our carnivores like to leave behind. Um, so let's see, let's add another group of uh, marmots over here because these two seem to be suffering just a little bit. We'll add it right between them and um, also some pikas because I think our red foxes like them uh, quite a bit. They seem to enjoy munching on little tiny pikas every now and then, but the pikas like to eat mushrooms. We learned that the other day and it seems like we have a pretty decent supply of mushrooms in the area. So I don't think we'll have to worry about that. It looks like they can reach all three of these, so I think they'll be okay. They have plenty of mushrooms to munch on and hold them over. How about our chevrotains? This is our original group of chevrotains, and it looks like there's only three left. So I wonder what was eating them. Um, I would imagine probably our snow leopard <laughs> because they eat so much. Um, I'm kind of sad that there's only one adult left. Oh no, now there's only two juveniles too. Oh my gosh, that snow leopard. He is brutal. We did know that the snow leopards were um, very, very hungry for red pandas. They are the, uh, the red pandas Oh no, <laughs> the red panda's worst predator. Oh my gosh, there he is, there he is right now. Oh no, he went right over here to the red panda territory. I have a feeling he is going to take all of them out within this episode. I have a very, very bad feeling about this because this right here 
There's a dead red panda. Oh my gosh, that was our baby too. That is so sad. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Leopard, don't you dare. He's walking straight into our bamboo forest right now. This is very, very worrying. Oh my gosh, we are about to see the extinction of our red pandas here. I have a feeling. How many are left? Um, one juvenile and one adult. Oh my gosh. The two lone red pandas left in here. That is so sad. <laughs> I guess that's just life though. The, the snow leopard has to eat too. And apparently the snow leopard has to eat a lot. It definitely has to eat a lot of food to uh, sustain itself. Or it's just uh, on a killing spree here. I know cats do like to hunt. <laughs> they are very... Uh, very, very good at hunting. So let's see. Oh, now it's just gonna nap in our bamboo forest, which is probably a very good location for this uh, particular leopard if he wants to make sure that he has a lot to eat. Because when he wakes up, I'm sure he'll be able to find those last couple red pandas. I wonder where they are, though. I would like to find them to uh, see what they're doing. I think that's one back there, way back here. Actually, this one might be far enough away that the red panda can't, or not the red panda, that the snow leopard can't reach it. Um, so maybe it's being smart right now. It's kind of going toward the walls too. Like, let me out. I don't want to die. Oh gosh. <laughs> but where's the baby? Because I think that's the adult. Yep, that one's 20 weeks old. So where on earth is that baby? That is a little bit worrying. Um, the snow leopards are on the move again, guys. Oh gosh, this is, uh, this is spelling disaster for our little red pandas. But it's good to know that even if our red pandas die off, we can always put them right back here. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like all of this extra food has really tempted them to come uh, <laughs> back into their proper zone. But uh, hopefully, hopefully they'll come back soon enough. And uh, this guy is still down here. He's still sleeping on the uh, snowy, snowy slopes. So I think this guy will probably stay here and munch on all of the creatures that we've placed down. Though I have noticed that this area down here at the bottom of this mountain slope here is so empty. <laughs> we need to find something to place over here, I think. Um, even if it's just a whole bunch of trees or something. Uh, we do have a lot of trees that we still need to unlock, so maybe we'll do that. And I am going to place a rhododendron there too because I love those. They are gorgeous. Um, and let's see. So we have Himalayan balsam, I believe. That actually produces some fruit too, so why don't we unlock that? It kind of looks like the bamboo, doesn't it? Or maybe not. The picture kind of looks like bamboo. <laughs> Let's see what this actually looks like. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of similar. They have those big reeds and um, there's tons of flowers on them. They're actually really, really pretty. They give the uh, biome a different splash of color that we didn't have anywhere else. I might place some of those right next to our bamboo forest, actually, because I think that would be very nice. Oh gosh, I didn't mean to pick up any bamboo, though. Where did our Himalayan balsam go? There we go. I do want to place some more of these here because they are very, very nice. And then I think we'll go over to our bamboo forest again, which... Hopefully still has red pandas. <laughs> there they are. Oh my gosh, I really can't believe how fast those snow leopards took down these guys. Like, I knew it was coming. I knew eventually the snow leopards would come over there and try to eat them because they're their favorite snack, I guess. But uh, I was hoping that they would last a little bit longer, especially with all of those babies that we just came in to see. <laughs> and then they were eaten right before our very eyes. Kind of sad, but I guess that's just the way of life here. So there we go. That should brighten up the place. It gives it a little splash of color that it did not otherwise have. And hopefully our red pandas will enjoy it for however long they have left. And let's see what else we can add in here too. Um, I believe there were some other bigger trees in the area. We have the wood apple. That might be nice to unlock. Um, that also has fruit, of course. And I know quite a few of the animals in here like to eat fruit. Like the chef rotain, I believe their favorite food was fruit. So let's see. Oh, this is a bigger tree. Okay, I actually really like this. I love the uh, big trees that we can place in the biome. And it's especially nice because this biome is so much bigger than the grasslands and um, all of the other biomes that were in the game to start with. Oh my gosh, look at those giant pieces of fruit. Look at those. Oh my gosh, the chef rotains are going to be so happy when they see this. <laughs> they are going to love those giant pieces of fruit. They've been doing pretty good with their uh, goji fruit so far. Um, Can we actually see fruit on these? I'm not really sure. Are, oh, okay. They're like, 
They almost look like little berries. That's probably what the fruit is because I don't think that was there before. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Okay, so we definitely want to place more of these giant wood apples in the area because that is pretty cool too. Um, let's see, where can we put that? I think we should probably continue to try to make this area look a little bit nicer than the way it currently looks right now. So we'll place some wood apples down here. Um, I think I'll place another one over here too. There we go. It actually costs less energy to place a wood apple than it costs to place a rhododendron. Oh, look at that. They actually adjusted it. Okay. <laughs> Never mind then. This used to cost, I think it was 60 energy points or, um, do they call those impact points? to place down, but it's been reduced to 35, so I'm very happy to see that. Now I can place some more rhododendrons around uh, the biome without worrying about running out of energy here. So we'll place a couple more over here while we're at it. This place is going to be overrun by plants pretty soon, I have a feeling. <laughs> I tend to go a little bit crazy with these things. Uh, I have a feeling we should probably place down some herbivores to properly munch on all of this grass and leaves and all this lovely stuff that we place down. Actually, we might want to place a uh, butterfly over here too, so we know that all of these things can be pollinated properly. I really like the Paris peacock butterfly because they're so much more colorful than our moths. Moths are good too, of course, but I do like those lovely teal little dots on their wings. Those are really nice. Um, and then I think we should probably place one back here unless these guys can reach it. It is kind of just barely scraping these, so maybe we'll place another one in the area. Um, or maybe over here. It looks like most of our moths were eaten over here, so we'll place a Paris peacock butterfly right there as well. And then, let's see, is there anything that we could place over here to enjoy our tiny little wood apple forest that we made? Um, let's see, we could do maybe some pikas. I'm sure they would like that. Or the chevrotains. Oh yes, the chevrotains might be a good idea because they do like the fruit. <laughs> so that might be a very good idea. Um, what did we have up here? Oh, that's right, our poor pandas with their low population problems. Okay, so let's put our chevrotains right there and hope that they also do not go completely out of control like our deer mice in the grasslands. And uh, they'll slowly pop in here and take a look at these huge trees. Oh my gosh, they are so big compared to our little chevrotains. And the way we placed it, it's almost like they're connected. That is really cool. It's like this archway, <laughs> a giant archway that our little chevrotains can sleep underneath. Actually, we should probably give them some fairy grass to uh, munch on as well, just in case they would like to have a little bit of grass as well as um, their giant pieces of fruit. And it would also make the place look a little bit nicer. I noticed that the grass didn't really spread over here, so it just looks so empty, and I felt like we really needed to do something about that, and I need to zoom out a little so I can place this properly, I guess. Um, most of the time, you can't place anything under the trees, so you kind of have to finagle it around here. <laughs> but there we go. I think that looks quite nice, and I think um, our little chevrotains are going to enjoy that very much. It looks like they're a little bit hungry right now, so hopefully they're going to be able to uh, munch on this fruit. Then again, I don't believe the fruit is ready yet, so, oh dear. <laughs> that may have not been such a good idea after all. We probably should have waited until the fruit was actually ready. That may have been uh, a much smarter way to play this, but instead we can just give them a little bit of a goji fruit here too, because we know that they like this. We are definitely sure that they like goji fruit. <laughs> yeah, that must be what these little red dots are, the goji fruit. I'm not really sure what uh, gojis look like, so I'm going to assume that that's correct. <laughs> There's a lot about this biome that I never knew before. I, need, I have never seen so many of these animals and so many of these plants, so this is really neat to uh, discover all of this along with you. So let's see, how are snow leopards doing now? Of course, they are perfectly fine. They're full, they're happy, so they are not uh, struggling at all. But I do wonder where they are, because if they're still in uh, panda country over here, then we have a bit of a problem. <laughs> I uh, wonder if they ate another one yet. Nope, these two are still hanging on. They're definitely still hanging on, so maybe we're okay? Maybe we salvaged them? I'm not really... Uh, hoping too much for that because 
I have a feeling, yep, as these guys are already taking down our chevrotains, <laughs> that as soon as they get just a tiny bit hungry, they are going to go straight back over to this side of the biome and try to uh, finish off our last two red pandas, but that's okay because like I said, we can always place some more right back in if uh, that's ever a problem. I do wanna make sure that they have um, enough food over here though, because we place quite a few different animals in here and they just munch them all away. So that's that's really worrying. I guess maybe we should expand over this way. That might help if we give them more to roam on on this side of the biome, because I believe their territory stretches all the way into zone three, <laughs> which we haven't even unlocked yet as the uh, game is telling me. Um, this zone is where I want to put our Bengal tigers once we unlock them because I think they'll enjoy the water. I know tigers love water. So uh, that's something that I wanted to make sure we had before I place them down into the biome. But yeah, I, I think we should probably try to expand this way as well. So that's something that will probably continue in the next episode. But let's try just uh, very quickly to place a couple things down here too. Of course, rhododendrons. Always have to have the rhododendrons over here. I found that they spread pretty quickly too. I'm not really sure what would eat these guys, <laughs> what would eat the rhododendron leaves, um, but I just really like them. We'll place some ants over here, and I believe we're going to need some mushrooms and earthworms. Yeah, I don't see any in the area, so we should probably place them down too, just so we know that the detritus levels won't go out of control in the month that we're gone. Um, there's two earthworms and some mushrooms as well. Um, I'm not really sure how many of these items you need to make sure that the detritus levels don't go out of control because we have done very, very well. I haven't seen the detritus levels rise since we started playing Tidal Ecology months and months ago. <laughs> so I have a feeling I'm probably uh, overkilling the area a little bit with all of the uh, different earthworms and mushrooms that I tend to place around, but it's better to be safe than sorry, I think. And we do know that our pikas like to eat the mushrooms anyway. So it's probably just a good idea to place down as many as we're able to. Now let's see, um, I think I want to add another herd of musk deer over here because I think the more larger animals we have, the more likely the snow leopards are to stay away from our poor little red pandas. Oh, chevrotains, oh you poor chevrotains. Are you actually starving? Uh-oh, um, okay, it's not this one. Oh no, that means it's our original group. Okay, I was worried that the ones that we placed down might be starving because uh, we didn't exactly give them a lot of food to eat. Okay, I have a feeling that um, the snow leopards probably ate them too. Probably. <laughs> that seems like a pretty safe bet, but it looks like they're going to reproduce in eight days. So as long as the snow leopards don't completely kill them off in those eight days, then our original group of chevrotains should be just fine. So I think we're going to be okay for that, but um, we're gonna place our musk deer over here and a little bit of grass for them to munch on too, because I'm not sure if they would go for our rhododendrons or not. Um, let's go down here to the fairy grass. There we go, place some of that around here. And the blue poppies too, I think, because that would also be quite nice to see next to our rhododendrons and something likes to eat them. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it was just our pikas after all, but something is definitely happy eating these little blue poppies. So we'll place a whole bunch of these down and uh, <laughs> that's kind of cute over there. This herd of uh, of a little musk deer all running off over this way. And oh my goodness, our other musk deers are already at low population. So yeah, we definitely need to make sure that these guys are well fed because it seems like they have to eat a new animal every couple of minutes. They are definitely very, very hungry creatures. So let's see, there's only two left in this territory already. Though we only dropped four in, I believe, in one territory. So maybe that has something to do with it too. Let's just place a couple of marmots over here to uh, properly, properly spread out some different types of herbivores, some smaller creatures as well. Um, there we go, two marmots over here. We'll place a group of pikas over here. Oh my gosh, I think they're starving already, right? Is that what's going on? Because I didn't exactly place any grass over here either. Oh gosh. <laughs> Always place the grass first. That is the smart way to play this. Always place the food down before you place the animals that need to eat it. So let's see, I think that's good guys. I think that's pretty good. 
Hopefully this means that the uh, snow leopards will have enough food to eat because we placed a ton of different animals in the area. We have marmots, we have pikas, we have deer, two herds of deer, though one is currently suffering. <laughs> we have our chevrotains over here. And uh, we have another group over here, though I'm not positive if the uh, snow leopards can get the fur. Oh, yes, they can. Oh, yes. <laughs> so the snow leopards have plenty to eat. And I don't feel like uh, they should run out anytime soon. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Because the snow leopards have certainly surprised me so far. As he's already down here sleeping back in red panda country <laughs> in our red panda little bamboo forest here so this is a little bit worrying guys but on that note i think we'll end the episode here as he sniffs out another delicious meal for himself <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching today and i will see you all next time bye <laughs>